Hello and welcome back to Scout Report, where today we're looking at how Real Madrid are going to build after the loss of their star man, Cristiano Ronaldo, and shove Barcelona off the top of La Liga. Here we go. 5. Huge boots to fill. Real Madrid are going through a period of transition after Zinedine Zidane left the Bernabeu with three successive Champions League crowns on his managerial CV. Things were made even harder in July when they bid farewell to their most lethal forward ever, Cristiano Ronaldo. Over his nine-year stint in Madrid, Ronaldo has crowned their record goalscorer with a spectacular 450 goals in 438 matches. Topping the 40-goal mark in eight of his nine campaigns, he has scored in every competition he has featured in for Real. With a career average of slightly over a goal a game, his peak season came in 2014-15, when he amassed 48 goals in 35 La Liga games. So, naturally, his boots are going to be extremely difficult to replace. And while the Real Madrid dressing room is already star-studded with the likes of Ramos, Isco and Bale, CR7 leaves a debt of goals that will need to be filled should Real Madrid hope to climb back into tighter contention. For the previous four seasons, the Portuguese international has been responsible for at least 25% of Madrid's La Liga goals, having scored 41% in his crazy season four years ago. Having let the 33-year-old go for 100 million euros, the old Real Madrid would have been keen to instate a new Galactico to pick up the limelight. But having spent 145 million in the same window and the financial fair play girls circling top clubs these days, Florentino Perez has decided to hold back on spending big on a marquee replacement up front for now, leaving Lepetiki to call reinventing the team without Cristiano an exciting challenge. 4. Bale and Benzema Without any fresh meat entering the Bernabeu, the Bass coach will look to Gareth Bale and Karim Benzema to help make light of Ronaldo's departure. The 29-year-old Welshman raised concerns for his future in Spain after his heroics in the Champions League final, announcing that he needed guaranteed first-team football to stay. Last season, only Ronaldo and Messi scored more per 90 minutes in the Spanish top flight than Bale. However, last term he was only available for 26 league appearances, as calf issues taped him to the sidelines and the season before he managed just 19. So, while he has started extremely brightly this season in the wake of CR7's departure, netting once every 83 minutes, his biggest challenge is going to be staying fit enough to hit the levels of consistency managed by Ronnie. Not expecting one singular player to match the freakish output of Ronaldo, Madrid can lean on 30-year-old Benzema as well. While Madrid lost their first derby against Atletico in Estonia, the beginning of La Liga has been positive for Karim Benzema, who in four games has scored five times as he looks fitter and sharper than ever before. And that's because, for the first time in almost a decade, the Frenchman joined pre-season at his ideal weight of 80 kgs, suggesting something has changed in his attitude. Obviously, this season is going to be challenging, and the concept of another Champions League win with a new coach and a shallower squad seems totally absurd. But the goal monsoon in their first three games, 10 goals, doesn't suggest immediate worry for the Madristas, as the void of Ronaldo seems to have allowed other talent to flourish, for now at least. Three. Change in style As Real adapt under a new manager, we can expect a shift in playing style. Under Zidane, the team was built around their number seven, with the main aim of the squad to suffocate the opponent with shots. On average, they took 18.6 per game in La Liga, way ahead of any other side, with Ronaldo leading by example, shooting an astronomical 180 times last season, more than double any other player. To allow Ronaldo to play in this vein, Madrid made sacrifices elsewhere. Enter Casemiro. As the midfield took up more defensive and pressing play, the need for a totally defensive-minded midfielder became more important. While Casemiro was much less creative than Toni Kroos and Luka Modric, it was a stylistic change that he had to put up with to continue getting the most out of an ageing Ronaldo. With Lopetegui at the helm, we can expect the style in which Spain have played in the national setup. Think more of a mix between Guardiola and Tic Taka, a possession-based style that looks like it will suit the rest of the squad well. Ronaldo's biggest drawback is his lack of involvement in open play and his refusal to press. If we look at Lopetegui's current top choice front three, Isco, Benzema and Bale, we can see that they are working much harder. They are averaging 46 passes per 90 between them. For context, Ronaldo made just 27 touches per game last season for Los Blancos. They're also all much more involved in the press, making around 13 presses on average per 90, while Ronaldo contributed 8 per game towards the team effort last season. Despite Lopetegui lacking the aura of a World Cup winning Zidane, his opening games have shown promise. Looking at their first three as case studies, they have an average of 73%, making 791 passes every game. So, while it is a definite work in progress, we can expect Lopetegui's side to dominate games with much more cohesive, possession-based football this season. 2. Invest in youth The upward trajectory of age at the Santiago Bernabeu should be cause for concern for the Madrid hierarchy, with over half their starting lineup last season on the wrong side of 30. 
Sergio Ramos might seem comfortable as a centre-back at 32, Modric turning 33 this season with Bale and Cruz heading for the milestone soon doesn't bode well for the future. Now would be a good time for Real Madrid to start investing in their youth, especially if they are hoping to compete with Barcelona in the future, who already have the likes of Usman Dembele embedded in their first team. To be fair, Real have shown signs that they are looking forward this summer, following the arrival of Vinicius Jr for €45 million. Euros. The forward dubbed as the current Brazilian wonderkid has already been compared to other Copa Sao Paulo stars, including Rivaldo, Neymar and Gabi Jesus. The 18-year-old isn't expected to gain a chance in the senior squad yet, but his form in Brazil and for Flamengo suggests that he could be worth a punch if the side needs some added firepower. Vinicius is already used to working under the limelight, so under the floodlights of the Bernabeu might not be too different. He has risen as the star of Generation 2000, the team of millennials who went three years without losing one single game and won the prestigious Copa of in 2015. Currently earning experience in Real Madrid's Castilla, he's got off to an impressive start. In two games, the forward has scored twice, both coming against rivals Atletico. Obviously, a South American star so young is still a risk. So, if you aren't feeling that adventurous, Yulin, there is youth to give a chance to on your very own bench. Marco Asensio, the 22-year-old Spaniard, has been knocking on the door of the first team since arriving from Espanyol in 2016. Last season under Zidane, he made just 19 starts in La Liga, but he proved to be a valuable addition, scoring six, assisting six, and earning himself two Man of the Match awards in limited time. In the 20 appearances he has made as a Madrista, he has created a huge 47 chances for his teammates, and he could prove vital doing the legwork behind Benzema. So far this season, Asensio has already been handed three starts and gained an assist, making two key passes per 90. He is evidence that Real do have youthful quality. They simply need to start using it, as age is literally a ticking time bomb in the Spanish capital. 1. Galactico signing while we've spent most of this investigation proving that Bale, Benzema, Isco and even Asensio are willing and ready to pick up the responsibility left by CR7, last season proved that even with them, they were a long way off toppling Barcelona. 17 points to be exact. Florentino Perez spent this summer courting the likes of Eden Hazard, Kylian Mbappe and former Barcelona player Neymar following his much-publicised unhappy stint in Paris. Pretty much admitting defeat that the French dance would not be willing to let him go this season, Rumours are still circulating that Real Madrid are preparing a 300 million euro bid at the end of this season. Already accustomed to the league in Spain, Neymar would be a risk-free addition to their squad. Last season in Liga, he was netting a goal a game and in the four games of 18-19, he is producing the exact same output. Back when he was at the Barragrana, the Brazilian was part of the most lethal attack in La Liga history, as Messi, Neymar and Suarez scored a goal every 45 minutes in 2015. At 26 years old, he is no longer a rising star, but he wouldn't drag up that average age either. He is one of the few talents in world football who would genuinely push Real to compete for the title, especially at five years younger than Messi and Suarez. Another option would be Neymar's PSG teammate, Kylian Mbappe, who at 19 years old could be an even smarter choice for the future. Only experience in Liga, Mbappe has been averaging 1.3 goals per game for Tuchel's side. And while you could argue he hasn't been challenged in the toughest leagues, his display in Russia this summer proved he is definitely world class. Our final option would be Tottenham's very own golden boy, 25-year-old Harry Kane. The out-and-out striker would fill an obvious number 9 shaped void and his scoring record of 25, 29 and 30 goals in the last three Premier League seasons speaks for itself. However, having recently penned a new deal to earn him £200,000 a week at White Hart Lane, Spurs seem to have him on lockdown. As we get closer to January and if Barca go clear again at the top of La Liga and they don't have a Champions League glory to fall back on, Perez has certainly given one hell of a challenge to a relatively inexperienced coach. The rumour mill is churning already, so come the summer, hunting down a Galactico might be Florentino's only option. So that was five ways that Real Madrid could cope without Ronaldo. What did you guys think of the list and did you think of any yourself? Let us know in the comments down below. While you're here, why don't you go check out yesterday's Stat Wars or Friday's Continental Club. And as ever, don't forget to like and subscribe.